try to walk the right road Yes, I try to believe Like a bad religion You gotta hold on me oh, I'm under your spell A sweet fallen angel I came in 66 with certain people that wasn't too popular because I thought that the area should be going somewhere further. But like an addiction, I can't get Fernie has definitely changed me, taught me to be a, a member of a community. Growing up in Fernie, wow, that's a pretty crazy question. Pretty much never missed school. My mom was pretty adamant about me going to school, even though it would be a pow day. <laughs> we always say that Fernie's the sixth member of our band. So. Skiing here has changed my life. I, um, I didn't ski before I moved here. I've been in Fernie uh, so long that the locals can't remember if I was born here or not. Do whatever I can and get by just to be part of this little town in the valley. I got here mid-season, uh, 19 seasons ago, and uh, you know, it was a smaller resort then, so it was harder to get work, especially mid-season. Heiko was shoveling snow off the roof, and he fell off, broke his collarbone, and he needed someone to help him shovel snow, and I was the random guy that came every day and said, hey, do you need anybody to work today? And that's how I started. This foreigner comes in there and he has big ideas. In 73, I quit my job with the Krosnitz Industries to run the ski hill full time. To me, Heiko is Fernie. He was there every single day with his family in the summertime, taking rocks off the runs and basically building the place with his own hands. Be pretty hard pressed to have anybody in town not know. You don't have to say Socher, you say Linda or Heiko, and they know who you're talking about. That amazing personality, that character that, you know, created this thing that just brought so many people here. So I came here in, uh, in the winter of 75, 76 to, to be a ski bum. And ski bum with a job, you know. I remember when I first started coming to Fernie and I was always, you know, getting myself free tickets at the ski hill and uh, telling everybody I was a photographer, you know. <laughs> so I was born and raised in Fernie. I never really felt like I ever wanted to leave Fernie um, because, I mean, this is the place that everyone leaves to. I'd say that growing up on the mountain has opened a lot of doors for me, like first person up on the resort, skiing pow, always been able to walk to the ski hill, it doesn't matter if my parents are around. I came to Fernie fall of 96 to put the roof on the aquatic center and the first day we were supposed to work we couldn't work because we woke up and there was a meter of snow in town so we got up to the ski hill and we can ski down and that was my first day in Fernie and it's a pretty amazing morning to see those mountains for the first time with that much snow on them. We get these unique weather systems that come in from the coast um, that uh, will track right through and then this will be one of the first real ranges that it hits. It's dominated by skiing. You can backcountry ski, you can ski at the ski hill, there's a couple of cat skiing places. You know, it's a really, really nice valley to live in and the mountains obviously are a big part of that.
Fernie's situated in the perfect spot between the westerly slow of moisture and the jet stream coming along the rocky, so it gets trapped here in large amount of dumps consistently. Works out really well for powder skiers. Fernie's weather is really unpredictable a lot of the time. They call for sunshine, it snows 100 centimeters. So you can look out the window one minute and it's so sunny and then the next is dumping. The days where snow coming up over your head and having to time your breathing at the top of your turn so you get your head up out of the snow and get a breath. And you open your mouth while you're down in your turn, you just get a mouthful of powder. People call it the, the Rockies. Some people call it the East Kootenays. You know, uh, there's one major range here of mountains. It's called the Lizard Range, right outside my window. Something you can see every day when you wake up is a huge ridge line with some of the best powder and tree skiing and fresh snow skiing that I've ever skied and I've traveled around the world. Fernie is a real genuine town, um, you know, there's uh, the coal mining, the logging, there's just the local people. When I first came here in the 70s, you know, it was all pretty new to have skiers in town. Some of the locals, you know, if they started chatting with you, you know, they'd ask you if you're one of those from up the ski hill with the tight pants and that sort of thing. And, you know, if you wanted to get into a scrap, you just keep chatting with them. If uh, you didn't want to fight, you just say, I'll see you later, guys, and wander away. The yellow license plates, which at that time Alberta had, yellow license plates. They didn't like those. They're tracking up their skiing, their powder snow. Sooner or later they found out that they need the skiers. It's unbelievable how much talent there is here. Uh, just every walk of life, uh, just musicians, singers, um, you know, and from that, uh, you start seeing people pop out, you know, you see Shred Kelly uh, all of a sudden just blowing up. Seasons changed and woke me. The band started at a jam night at the Brick House on Thursday nights a few years ago. And I was delivering pizza, I was doing all these ski bum jobs, and then I wrote a song about it. This is called I Hate Work. Playing in Fernie is, it's like uh, so epic for us because uh, we'll go on the road and uh, play all these other markets across Canada, but when you come home, it's always the biggest, uh, greatest crowd for us. One, one year we played Wapiti Music Festival, and uh, it was after we had done uh, 55 shows across the country all summer, and uh, Fernie, when we got back and played Wapiti, and we played our song, I Hate Work, and at the end, um, it's kind of a ski bum anthem, and at the end everybody cheers, I hate work, and uh, the entire crowd was ch chanting that, that line, and it was like, Whoa, it, it almost, you know, we almost got emotional on stage. We're like, this is great. Yeah, All the kids are singing along. Work. We're just, we're creating a, a next generation of ski bums because all the kids are just chanting, I hate work. <laughs> and a local author, Angie Abdu, has a, actually has said, it's an interesting social experiment to raise a community of children <laughs> on the theme, I hate work, and see what happens. <laughs> So we'll so check back in a few years and we'll let you know. We all 
all moved here from all over Canada. None of us knew each other coming here. We all moved here for our various outdoor loves and met through playing music, but it was the mountain culture that brought us all here. Fernie's famous for all the snow and uh, it's pretty well known that the snow comes from the Grizz. I mean, the Grizz is the mountain man with the musket. Grizz makes it snow. Uh, <laughs> he's the, the half man, half bear, half, uh, half wolf. Wait, what is it? Short, stout man of shoulders of six feet wide and he, uh, you know, he grew up with a, a family of grizzlies and grizzly bears in the mountains. If there's any clouds, he can shoot powder. Crusty old trapper with a gun that shoots powder. Bearded little old trapper dude, you know, with snowshoes and mucklucks. I like the I like the idea. But you know, it's it's a great little mythical creature like the Sasquatch or the unicorn, you know, and people believe it to a certain extent. There has to be something special because this small little valley shouldn't get as much snow as it does. Skiing here has changed my life. I, um, I didn't ski before I moved here. So I learned how to ski in Fernie. Um, so it's my employment. Uh, my family skis here. My parents started skiing. They never skied before I moved out here. They took ski lessons at 60 and 65. And now they come out here for three weeks every winter. It's just a small town that kind of you'd, you'd kind of expect to see out of something like a Christmas movie. The people that are in Fernie, uh, we have like just a, everything, you know, like young people and old people and people from other countries and uh, part-timers and full-timers and uh, just very dynamic, super dynamic community of just every walk of life. It's amazing. But the one thing that ties us together is just everybody's here for the beauty and for the, to be active and do something, you know? You can tell when people aren't from here, they, they never say hello. It's an ongoing thing here in Fernie. Hello, how are you doing today? Feeling good. What I really like about the Fernie atmosphere and the Fernie town itself is this really small community nature. And it's right beside the ski hill. Like some other places you have to end up driving for 15 minutes or 10 minutes from town. And here we're just five minutes away. You can see it every morning. We get a lot of employees from all over the world. And it really seems like you have an international atmosphere just in this very small community. People kind of when they move here, they, they move here for the winter from wherever they came from and they, then they hear about how fun the summer is and then all of a sudden they've, they've been here for 10 years. <laughs> so everyone comes here and finds their way here their own way and when they finally decide to stay here they want to share it and show it to others. It's, it's really part of the atmosphere here is to show everyone a good time when they come to Fernie and make sure they understand how special this place really is. I think that when people from bigger cities decide to move to Fernie, it makes me feel really good and thankful that I actually grew up here because I think they're like jealous and that's the reason they move here. And I know that I had such a good childhood growing up here, so I think it's 
I think it's amazing that parents want to come live here and raise their kids. It definitely will change their lives. That's what I think. We all move away, we all change. There's a place, there's a place we we all move away, we all change. There's a place we all the same. We all What's similar with all ski towns is that they've, they do all have culture, they've all got passion, um, but what makes them all unique are the people. And Fernie is definitely one of those places that has these unique people in a great place that are very passionate. And uh, because of that, we do have this great culture here. It's just amazing. There was a year when I said, if it snows once more, we can't run that elk tea bar anymore because the teas were dragging in the snow. So we had to shovel and we had no snow cats then. The packing was done by the skiers. I'm so happy I understand. The deepest and best snow I'll ever ski in my life just because it's burnt in my memory now and I'll never have a better day than this. You could walk through the parking lot up to your waist and not even feel the snow and it was just like, wow, this is amazing. Favorite words will never change. Trust in you is a sin. Tuesday was my deepest pow day here. There is 100 centimeters overnight. I had school that day. It was a Tuesday. Um, the buses couldn't actually get up here, so my mom said, okay, you guys can go skiing. It was unbelievable, like minus 20, snows 90 centimeters of fresh snow. So all week it was just the most unbelievable deep snow of my life. And all the, all the weekenders come flying in on Friday with their eyes this big, holding their phones against their shoulders as they're peeing, you know, in the men's bathroom going, oh uh, yeah, I'd like to reschedule that appointment. That'd be great. And like, yeah, can I move that meeting till Thursday? Yeah, that'd be great. You have to uh, be prepared for deep snow and, uh, and light snow. You have to uh, sit back a little bit, anticipate it, ski a little further apart, float, and you can make turns anywhere you want. Over a season, I tell people if you come here for a season, you're going to have the best skiing winter of your life. It's like, there's some weeks it's just like cat skiing every day. I can remember my favorite week ever. We got 274 centimeters in a week. Pretty much three meters of snow in one week. It was snowing 40 one day and then 60 the next day. And it just covers everything. They don't even have a chance to get it off the streets and they make the, what's called the center plow, so you can only go one way in each direction. There's a huge plow of snow in the center of the streets. So you can't even see the cars coming the other way, and you know it's just, there's nothing left to do. You just have to go skiing. Do whatever I can and get by so that I can stay here and get to ski here one more season or be here in the summer to go mountain biking on the trails or hike up the mountain, the trails that Heiko's made just to be part of this little town in the valley. I could definitely see myself spending the rest of my life here. It's just got everything I could ever want, and um, yeah. It'd have to be something pretty special to tear me away from this place.
Is that a wrap? Wrap. Let's go skiing. Are we on right now on the yep. movie? Is it working? Somewhere between 5 and 10 centimeters per hour of snowfall, um, which is pretty epic. Maybe to die. Maybe to die. That was the deepest day that I remember, even going to Japan, like, it was deeper here. <laughs> Powder is forgiving, it's happiness. <laughs>